Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button, also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next uh, Governor of Anambra State. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning, brilliant lady. I commend your, your team for brilliance. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, welcome to the program, sir. But first, are you disappointed that despite the efforts of Igbo elders and also the Oanes in Igbo to talk to the political parties, to say now it is the turn of the Southeast and that no Southeasterner should accept uh, a vice presidential slot? Yet, in spite of all of that, um, no major political party, except maybe Labour Party, has an Igbo uh, standard bearer. There are four others in the smaller parties, ZLP, NRM, and uh, uh, ADC, uh, that have uh, uh, Igbo standard bearers. But the two major political parties that were the focus, they're not promoting the Southeast agenda. Are you disappointed? Let me make a small comment, please. Um, Nigerians should be happy. I should say congratulations to Nigerians. Something is ending and a beginning is coming. Nigeria has been playing politics without conscience, without principle, and without consistency. I think that God has taken over, taken over and to dominate man's mess up of God's design for Nigeria's greatness, superpowerdom, and raising the respect and dignity of all blacks. Things are bound to change. Yes, we said we do not need any, anybody from the South is to go for uh, vice president. You see, when there is no conscience in politics, there will be no principle. And without principle, there can be no consistency. Now, we are the Ibu elders group. Have principle, have consistency. We've said we don't want a vice president from our side. We want president. That's it. And now we haven't got it from the major parties. We don't want them to give us vice president either. So we work for president. And as it is now, we are, I think, not unlucky. The PDP, the APC, these who have reached the highest level. The highest bidders have taken everything. And we are not among the highest bidders. Our people make money from their sweat. So um, we are not regretting too much what happened. But so many things have gone wrong, even from among ourselves. Our leadership has not been clear. And they has not been strong enough to introduce discipline in the behavior of our political parties. Uh, as you saw, you can, you can say APC didn't give us, uh, PDP didn't give us, even though we have been sacrificial and for PDP. Um, but we got something from Labour. And uh, God knows what his plans are. 
The designs of God is for greatness for this country. The resources in manpower and material God gave Nigeria is for superpowerdom, not for these things we are doing. And if it is a matter of highest bidder, I mean, I think it is over for PDP. It is over for APC. Something else must happen. God has taken over Nigerian politics to impose his will to dominate over man's mess up of God's design. This is how I see what is going on. But I'm, no, I'm not a prophet. I'm not even spiritual. But this is how politically I see the, uh, the situation. Well, sir, you don't have to be a prophet. You have your own perspective. And what might that something that have taken over, what might that be? Since you've ruled out APC, you've ruled out PDP, what exactly do you think could be God's design? Well, for me, I think we are coming out of a certain politics to something more relevant, more developmental, and more positive in Nigeria. Um, if you you can see some people rejoicing. They're not rejoicing because they will make personal gain from what is unveiling. If Peter B becomes president of Nigeria, you will hear many people jumping up and dancing and saying, Nigeria has come alive. There will be no Almagiri is anymore. They will be eliminated. They will be helped to, be, uh, to survive. There will be no urban talakawas anymore. Nobody has a destiny of poverty. Nobody. So Nigeria will explode in economic development. And uh, people become fix Nigeria. And it is not for the interest not for the benefit of Igbo. No way. Some Igbo don't understand. P2B is just a gift of God to all Nigeria. The Fulani will be stable in the country and not want to dominate everybody. The Igbo was a level playing ground. The Yoruba is very successful already. The same week goes with all the small groups. And this is a turning point. For our country. I'm proud of it. I'm happy to tell anybody who is listening that a change is coming. We kept talking about new Nigeria. New Nigeria. That new Nigeria is being manifested. And that's how I see it. Okay. A new Nigeria is coming. A change is coming. It's being manifested. Your candidate is Peter Obi. You think and get the job done. How will you win the Southeast? Will the Ohadez Indigbo formally endorse him? Will Governor Umayi no. turn around and say that uh, we'll help Peter Obi because he said the vote in Ebony is for Tinubu? What will happen? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, internal problems. I mentioned our weakness in leadership that can impose discipline. But this man is my personal friend. Uh, my, every Christmas he brings rice to my house. But, you know, there are some people who don't understand the ABC of Nigerian politics. Omahi decamped from PDP. And uh, I saw him in the presence of uh, uh, Pius and Yim's house when he came to lobby for Pius to join him. I later discovered Pius refused. But instead of thinking of why Pius refused, he still went ahead and joined APC. How many people followed him? Now, Umahi, as governor, and even chairman of governors, comes out directly against the interest of his people. I have read so many things about him. 
how he has brought in people who killed his, uh, his own people. And uh, this time around, I think I will appeal to him and I will go personal to him and tell him to recant and make his, a, a different statement from what he said. He helps him nowhere. He doesn't help anybody from the southeast. And what is worse, his position cannot help Nigeria. We are more interested in blacks, all blacks on earth. This is why God gave us some destinies he gave us. So uh, if a person like uh, chairman of Eastern Governors says, says uh, his people should not vote uh, Peter will be. He's talking for himself. And he must withdraw it fast. He must withdraw that statement very fast. So, um, we are prayer people. Very soon you will hear there will be a, an Igbo wide prayer to God to say, forgive us for all our trespasses. And help us help Nigeria. We are not uh, talking to help us alone. Help us help Nigeria to lift the position of blacks in the world. And the blacks need to take a, a position in the world. Look at the United Nations. They are there and people are being mauled and killed in uh, Ukraine. This is not what God created us for. God created the black man first to begin with. And the black man has resources in every way to affect how the world goes. But because, because of our problem and then uh, the slave trade, ETC, we find it necessary for uh, the black Americans to say black lives matter. When Nigeria takes its rightful position in the scheme of things in the world, everybody will know that black lives matter. It's not a matter of, uh, we are fighting in Nigeria among ourselves and killing ourselves. It's not our job. God designed us to lead blacks on earth. And we are about to begin that job. Okay, beyond all of this, uh, uh, President of Southeast Extraction, your preferred candidate, uh, Peter Obi, and all the other issues we've been discussing, what's your impression so far about the present political process leading up uh, to 2023 general elections? Some people have expressed concerns about religion, about ethnicity, and also about the monetization, uh, the reign of bribery in the process. What, what's your take on some of these issues? Well, let me start with uh, some of the people, things we don't control. I arrived Nigeria as an Igbo. I didn't choose to be an Igbo. I arrived Nigeria having arrived as Igbo, as a Christian also. I didn't choose to be a Christian. My friend Musa arrived in Kano. He didn't choose to be Fulani or Hausa. He also didn't choose to be a Muslim. But these things were done by God, whom all of us worship. How does it become me to go and fight against people? I invited Mietiela here. I invited Gumi. I invited some people who have independent thinking. I eventually, we, could, we couldn't meet because I didn't have enough money to pay for ticket and, uh, and uh, this. If anybody is listening to this and wants it to go on, let him help me. I, I didn't have the money for ticket and uh, hotel accommodation. But we need people who will think away from ethnicity. You are, I'm Igbo. Who makes me Igbo? God only. I don't know when he decided. I didn't know I was going, what Igbo is. The same thing, I arrived and found myself a Zifa, and I find everybody there is Christian. And I'm also Christian. And 
Take the Quran, read it clearly. Take the Bible, read it clearly. And you'll find no serious difference between the two holy books. And in chapters of the Quran, the Allah made it clear that he sent the holy book of our Bible, he sent the gospel, and he sent also, according to the Quran, um, the Muslim religion. But I don't think that we should, because of religion, because of our tribe, uh, kill ourselves, reduce our position in the world of politics. No, we should exploit them. God gave us tremendous human resources, many talents from many tribes, but lack of leadership made it uh, difficult for us to realize where we belong. Now, money. When you lose consci conscience, and nothing else is left but comprehensive corruption in every way. Comprehensive corruption in every way. Now, we are saying we want Ibu, uh, Southeast president, president of Southeast extraction. Many of our delegates did not vote for any Southeast person because of what? Money. And then the set of the economy, poverty. If I, do I have that money to give them? Huh? Uh, bullion vans started bringing dollars now, not Naira. Bullion vans were bringing dollars to the event areas, the primary um, activities. And uh, even the dollar was effective enough to affect the price of money, the exchange rate. In Nigeria. So we came to the PDP. The dollar man, uh, uh, my friend, uh, the former vice president, he came to, to APC. Uh, ha, my friend, Tinubu, uh, unleashed dollar. He means many of the people, he sponsored them to buy 100 million naira. Uh, a set form, application form. And when the time comes, they step down for him. And then he shared money to people. Let me let you know, I contributed to um, Tinubu becoming a governor in Lagos State. And uh, Tinubu was the only human being who supported me financially when they kidnapped my wife. So I'm not saying anything personally against him. But if I have a vote, I won't vote for him. Because I don't want him to go and die there. Also, it is not, I think, the Yoruba and the Igbo are the main reasons why we have problems in Nigeria. Because the two they misunderstood themselves from 1952. They misunderstood the symptoms. If the Yoruba and the Igbo are to understand themselves and love Nigeria jointly, all well, this domination of any group by, in Nigeria would be a dead thing. And the country will take its own position in the world. And uh, the Yoruba better wake up. Igbo, wake up. If you talk to a Igbo man, say, ah, Yoruba will not change. He talked to Ibo, uh, Yoruba, Ibo will never change. We will keep fighting. Now, change is coming. Let not the Yoruba go supporting Tulubu and the, the uh, supporting um, our, our friend. So I think the time has come for melting. Let Nigeria take advantage of God-given advantages. Let the Igbo and the Yoruba mix, integrate, and work together. Let the Fulani know they are 
a minority. But let Nigeria Igbo and the Yoruba know we need different. They have strategic thinking ability. And they have role, special role, to play for the success of Nigeria. And every group in Nigeria, no group can work out of a Nigerian system that is effective. So please, I'm appealing to all. I appeal to all Nigerians to pray. The Igbo will have maybe three days of prayer. And every woman, anywhere he is, will pray at a given hour so that we stop making shame of ourselves. All the good gifts of God. Sometimes we throw them with our bad mouth. Sometimes we, we are arrogant into the, in, in the extreme. We need a change in Nigeria. And that change is coming. Let nobody block it by giving us all kinds of fake stories and uh, arrogant propaganda. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chukemeka, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you.